Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about a DAC that comes from a completely new brand on the market. So this is their first DAC. It's actually their first product ever. And the brand is called Leather, while the model itself is called Schumann. So this is a Leather Schumann DAC. And this is basically a brand introduced by ShenzenAudio.com. That's an online hi-fi store that introduced this brand into the market. Now, I don't know what their plans are and what they will make in the future, but for now we have this one R2R DAC. Well, interesting thing that they call it FPGA DAC on their website. But FPGA DAC is not truly a thing because FPGA circuit is used to process the signal, to prepare it for the actual DA conversion. And in this model, the actual digital to analog conversion is done by a series of resistors, discrete ones. That's called a ladder DAC. Maybe that's why they chose the, this name for the brand, or as we all know it, R2R. And I don't know why they call it FPGA DAC on their web page, but I suppose that R2R is not that much of a novelty these days, so they wanted something that sounds more marketable. And using FPGAs with custom programming is definitely something that you can brag about more than just saying that you are having R2R DAC. By the way, this DAC also has a non-oversampling mode, NOS, and two OS modes, I believe. But we'll talk about that a little bit later when we come to the sound fidelity. But for now, I'll just guide you through connectivity and some features of this DAC. So looking at the back panel, you can see just next to the power inlet, AES digital input. Then next to it, I squared S in form of HDMI. Then the usual optical toss link and USB and coaxial RCA toss link that, that is SPDIF. So basically whatever you want to use and however you want to connect your digital source to this DAC, you're covered. And when it comes to analog outputs, we have two RCAs, those are single-ended outs, and two XLRs, which are balanced outputs. Nothing else on the back here, except maybe that I've noticed uh, that power inlet is high quality Furutec. That's copper made gelded power inlet. And it shows attention to details. In the front, you can see that there is a lot of buttons and LEDs. And there's no going beating around the bushes with this one. This whole user interface and front panel resembles strongly to Danafrips Aris 2 and other Danafrips decks. I have to say this because otherwise I think I would be covered with questions down below in the comments. I don't know, I'm not aware if there's any connection between leather brand and Danafrips brand. Are they produced in the same factory or designed by the same engineer? I don't know that. I'm not going to play uh, web police. That's something that's, in my opinion, uh, internal thing between these factories and different brands that use same factories and same engineers. That should all be dealt on a corporate level if there's anything to deal with in the beginning. So, uh, as a user, I am going to review this DAC as any other DAC. I'm going to talk about sound fidelity, how it works, features, etc, etc. So, as you can see, there is no display on this unit. And when you change inputs, when sample rate of your signal changes, or when you enter some mode NOS or OS, everything is shown through these small red LEDs. And I don't know, it's a matter of taste. Maybe you like this or dislike it. For me, it's pretty okay because this is a bare bones Spartan DAC. It's just a digital to analog converter. It doesn't have any sort of volume control or tone controls or sound colors, anything like that, like many modern SMSL stoppings and other DACs have. So funny thing is because I received this deck so early to actually test it and review it, 
I didn't receive any manual with it. And as far as I can see, at least last time I checked like a few days ago, uh, user manual was not ready to be downloaded on the website either. And because of that, I can only guess that when you actually press NOS OS button and this last small LED in front lights up, that you are in the NOS mode, non-oversampling. And I'm guessing that by just judging the sound, how it sounds. Because when I press that OS NOS button again and LED turns off, I feel that that is OS mode, especially because I can enter with this mode button into a setting and change between two different modes. And that really sounds like changing two different oversampling settings. One of these settings is kinda sharper, brighter, more detailed oriented, while the other one is more just juicier, more energetic, a little bit more raw in your face and just fuller sounding. I preferred that second one, but I actually prefer what I think is NOS when the LED in the front is lit because in that mode, it sounds most spacious and airy and the sound stage is deepest and just has most of the empty space and separation between tones and instruments. And also, I don't feel any sort of edge sharpening and edge enhancement going on. Everything sounds really smooth and natural. And because of that, I'm going out on a limb here and saying that when this small LED is lit, that is an NOS mode. I, I should be more political about it because when the manual finally come, comes and if I'm wrong, if I preferred OS mode or something like that, a lot of you will be like, ha ah, ah. But I believe that I should share what I hear and what I think and my personal impressions and not just repeating something that I expect because of what some mod should sound like. And with that, let's continue with the sound fidelity of this deck. Oh, but yeah, just before I go into that, I probably forgot to mention that this deck costs 1400 US dollars. It's not a small price for a deck, but in my mind, it justifies that price. So I'll start with something that's really a wrong suit of most artoirs and that's like big, wide and deep soundstage. So soundstage is really big and has a lot of empty space and lot, lots of room around instruments. But all of that is done in a way that all of these instruments and their outlines, their edges, details that we can hear sound very natural and smooth. There is no kind of edginess and sharpness and, and a tacky, chloe sound to this deck. And that part about sounding natural and smooth and not edgy is basically true about any artoirs, starting from a really affordable Cayenne RU6 and shit modi multibit through Dana Fripp Series 2 and great musician Pegasus, for example. But what these more expensive artoirs are bringing is level of details and transparency that's just not attainable with something like Cayenne RU6 Modi Multibit and even Dana Fripp Series 2. Schumann definitely does not leave you wanting for more micro details for more texture or just speed in general. It's really highly detailed sounding deck. For example, I like to play this song. It's a beautiful vocal and this is like a surreal recording. There's a lot of tiny, husky, 
little noises and breaths being taken and squeaks happening around the singer and somebody putting something in its place and you're hearing those kind of noises and everything, all of that is so easily picked up and served to you by Leather Schumann. And basically, if I take the most detailed deck that I've ever tested on this channel, Leather Schumann is slightly more detailed than that. So it basically surpasses decks like Chord Cutest and Topping D90 LE in terms of sheer detail retrieval. And that says something. It's highly detailed deck. But then when you join that with that thing that basically all artoirs are doing great, that means that it sounds unforced and really smooth and really natural, and this one sounds that way too, the result, in my opinion, is glorious. Because you get a really huge and, and just widespread sound stage of something like Dana Fripp Series 2, but then, then you get quick transients and speedy, nimble bass line with great amounts of texture and all of this crazy amount of detail retrieval as you would get with topping D90LE, for example, just in a smoother, more natural way. And just more 3D sounding. And I was immediately hooked up. And that also includes great tone decay. So if you have a main tone, for example, like a string pluck, and it slowly finishes, slowly, it's slowly dying away. Most Delta Sigma decks, like Toppings and SMSL, will cut it much sooner than something like a really good R2R deck will do. This one will let that trail, that vibration dying slowly in time be observable for the longer period of time. And that really creates that full, rich timbre that, that you feel that instrument is more than its leading sharp edge. It has full body, it has vibrations and decos around it. And then it lasts in time and slowly dies away. And you hear all that really clearly because this sound stage is big and airy and well separated and the background is dark. Then what else? Dynamics. Dynamics both in terms of huge big scale dynamic swings and these small micro changes, hits, plucks, things like that. Everything sounds really lively through Leather Schumann. And I was really stuck in that state where, where I just kept listening one more song and one more song. Like, let me play something a little bit more complex uh, like this where there's lots of instruments and space. It's, it's like a natural recording with natural atmosphere that you can hear. And everything is separated, layered and arranged in, in a nice, wide 3D sound stage. But then I move to something simple, like one man, one guitar. I like this stuff, Lua. It's pretty simple song. But if you have a good system and a good resolving deck with rich tone timbre, you keep discovering small layers of textures and tone decays and, and just small noises from that recording that, that you keep getting blown away. And my own girlfriend really likes this song, Lua, and she asked me to play it for her when one day and she was saying like, wow, I don't remember this sounding so realistic, palpable and detailed before. I think she's right. This Leather Schumann really has a great balance between 
tonefulness and richness and just sound stage space and width and detail retrieval that is actually top-notch, unlike many of other artwares. And at the time when I received Leather Schumann, I was listening to several really great decks. First, I got Topping D90 LE that I thought, well, this sounded more energetic and slightly more textury and slightly more re revealing than SMSL M500 MK2 that I've used for some time before that. And if I was just a regular person customer that bought that deck, I wouldn't look any further. I would be perfectly happy with it. As I was with SMSL, by the way, those are perfectly fine decks. But at that time, Musician Pegasus arrived. And Musician Pegasus shares a lot of same qualities of Leather Schumann. And they really love how Musician Pegasus sound. So to keep things just a little bit shorter, I'm going to compa compare Leather Schumann with Musician Pegasus. Because up until Schumann, that was basically hands down the best sounding deck that I've ever tried. So if you want to know how both Musician Pegasus and Leather Schumann fare to something like Topping D90 LE or Denef Rip Series 2, just go please and watch that review because today I'm just going to compare Schumann with Pegasus and by having that review that you can always watch again where I compared Pegasus to these other decks, you can draw all conclusions that you need. Well, I'll start with saying that both of these share most of the same qualities, like 90% of adjectives that I would use to describe qualities of both these decks are basically the same. Because both of these have big sound, have very natural and smooth r to r sound, great palpability of tones, and really good three-dimensionality of tones, with smooth sounding natural tonality and edges that are just so natural, not sharpened, not edgy. And both of these offer really high detail retrieval that really holds up to best Delta Sigma decks that I've heard personally. But it also definitely differentiates two of these from more affordable R2R decks, such as Dana Frip Series 2, Shit Modi Multibit and Cayenne RU6, that have that smoothness and rich tone timbre, but significantly lower resolution, detail retrieval, and just overall lively, less lively dynamics and microdynamics. But what are the actual differences? Well, to my ears, Leather Schumann sounds even more transparent, just by a little bit, but I can definitely hear the tiniest of details dug out of recording easier with Schumann here. And also the sound stage is slightly better layered and separated. I feel that I could more easily just stand up and make a circle around the singer that's standing in between my speakers when I'm listening to Leather Schumann than when I'm listening with Pegasus. And that leads me to slightly different presentations where Pegasus is a little bit more laid back with leading vocals and leading instruments. Schumann is slightly more forward, but only with these leading vocals and instruments. Background instruments and detailing are equally deep. So it is great sounding with Pegasus, but I feel that it's slightly more stretched in terms of depth with Leather Schumann here. And finally, Leather Schumann offers just slightly richer mid-range with vocals and things like drums or any acoustic instrument sounding a little bit fuller and more palpable in space, like it's even more 3D, which 
actually makes Schumann the richest sounding, most 3D sounding with richest timbre DAC that I've ever owned or just tested in my own system. What I'm trying to say here basically is that Leather Schumann feels like a slight improvement over already fantastic sounding musician Pegasus. And it is slightly more expensive. And is the difference worth it? I don't know. It depends, I guess, on your budget and your system and how high you set your goals. But I feel that both are equally good purchase. If you can spend a little bit more, I would go for, for Leather Schumann. To my ears, it does justify that slight price hike. If you cannot, or if you already own Musician Pegasus, the difference is small enough that you don't need to worry about. You already have a great sounding product. You have to remember and keep reminding yourselves that just because I've tried something new and I slightly preferred it to something else, it doesn't mean that I'm telling you you have to sell your own deck and immediately go out and buy this one. I'm just presenting you with all the options and saying what I liked the most. That will probably keep happening because I deliberately order and accept so many things to try, test and review. And it's bound to happen that my favorites will sometime change, maybe slowly, sometimes quickly. This was like a crazy ride where in like course of two weeks, I got three decks, each one better than the previous ones, to my ears at least. But the end result was that I basically settled for two champions, Leather Schumann and Musician Pegasus, and I definitely wouldn't mind ending like my deck journey with Musician Pegasus, but since I've got Leather Schumann here, it's just the best sounding deck that I've personally owned. Even if it is by a small margin, I still prefer it. And I've been using it for the last few weeks. Some of my friends came over, some other decks were compared with it, and, and it basically impressed almost everybody who have heard it with those qualities that I've mentioned. And what can I say? It's a hell of a debut for a completely new brand, Leather. This one is a really, really great sounding deck. I know a lot of you will be asking me in the comments, uh, compare it to Danafrips Pontus, that's like a more fair comparison, or to Hollow Spring or something like that, but I don't have those. If by any chance factories offer to lend them to me, I will do those comparisons too. They are quite expensive to import to my country. But I think that Leather Schumann would put a really good fight against these well-established and highly rated decks, because my ears usually don't lie to me and this is one fantastic sounding device. And that would be all for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then click that button, subscribe to the channel, that means a lot. Comment down below the video. So that would be all. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.